So, uh, hey everyone, and uh, thanks for attending this session today. Uh, can everyone hear me okay? Okay, great. Uh, I'm Naranjan. Uh, I'm currently a software engineer working on the Itstio add on uh, for AKS at Microsoft. Um, specifically, right now, um, I'm focusing on uh, multi cluster, very topical, um, edge traffic management and uh, various other Itstio features that we are incorporating into our add-on. Uh, so today uh, I wanted to cover some important uh, security considerations of using Itstio, um, both based on some uh, feature requests and uh, frequent questions that we've received for our add-on, um, as well as some uh, broader guidelines and best practices that have been adopted throughout the Itstio community. So throughout the ecosystem, um, it's become pretty common to refer to Itstio as being uh, secure by default, but uh, to borrow a phrase from the book Itstio in Action, which I highly recommend uh, everyone here check out at some point, um, it's more appropriate to consider Itstio uh, almost secure by default. Um, so even though a lot of Itstio's uh, security capabilities like MTLS and automated certificate management uh, are enabled out of the box, um, there are still various vulnerabilities and loopholes that operators need to be aware of and take actions accordingly. Now, there is being work done by the project maintainers and various stakeholders um, to make the default settings more secure, uh, but there's a, a limit to how um, robust these baseline security settings can be. Uh, just given the variation in architectures and networking topologies with uh, Itstio and Kubernetes, a one-sized-fits-all uh, approach to security uh, is just not feasible. Uh, in terms of what these potential attack vectors and uh, security risks are, um, there are quite a few that are worth considering. Uh, we still haven't fully locked down communication, especially when it comes to uh, restricting inbound and outbound traffic. Um, we haven't addressed the possibility of misconfiguration and configuration drift. Uh, which is a problem throughout the cloud native and Kubernetes ecosystem. Um, staying on outdated Itstio versions with CVEs is another major one. And even after we take some steps to harden our environment, uh, there's still avenues of bypassing our security controls. And a lot of that stems from relying exclusively on Itstio as a mechanism to secure our applications. Um, and also, without the right level of telemetry, uh, we might not be having enough insights into our environment to detect anomalous behavior. Um, or on the other hand, uh, we might be, uh, end up being too verbose with our logging and inadvertently leak sensitive information. So what we should be striving for uh, is to implement zero trust principles. So uh, never trust and always verify, least privileges, and assuming that an attacker is already in our network and attempting to limit the damage that they can do. But fully putting these principles into practice requires some additional steps on our end. We also want to achieve defense in depth, so building a holistic security architecture so that there isn't any single point of failure. So not only do we have more Itstio configurations uh, that we need to tweak, um, but we also need to look beyond the service mesh itself to incorporate additional tools to establish guardrails at multiple layers. So some of the areas uh, we'll be looking at will be authentication and authorization, uh, edge traffic, uh, PKI, and a few others. And uh, to conclude, I'll showcase a brief demo of what a more secure setup um, that incorporates multiple controls could look like in practice. Uh, I also just wanted to point out that this list is not all inclusive or exhaustive. Um, it's pretty much impossible to uh, squeeze in every single threat you might face in a 25 minute session. Believe me, I tried. Um, but at the same time, uh, you don't necessarily need to account for all of these risks or uh, take all of these measures. So uh, the goal of this talk is to um, provide an overview of various uh, security risks that could be applicable to you. Um, and propose some solutions and tactics for you to explore later. So to start off, uh, let's talk about authentication and encryption. As I was highlighting earlier, uh, Itstio does um, enable auto MTLS uh, out of the box, 
but um, it's important to delve deeper into what exactly this means. Um, there are two levels to MTLS. Uh, one is what kind of traffic are servers accepting, which is governed by the peer authentication resource. And uh, the other is what kind of traffic the client sidecars are sending out, uh, which is controlled by the destination rule. Um, so the default peer authentication setting in its DO is permissive mode, uh, meaning that even though auto MTLS is enabled uh, by default, the sidecars can still accept plain text traffic. Uh, from non-meshed workloads. And uh, the reason of uh, having it as permissive uh, is to make it easier to migrate your applications uh, to the mesh, uh, especially for uh, larger organizations where onboarding can be a very complex process. Uh, but once you're done onboarding all your applications to Itstio, uh, you should set the MTLS mode to strict to uh, enforce that MTLS is used. Um, so after migrating all of your workloads, uh, you can create a peer authentication like this uh, in the Itstio system namespace to configure uh, strict MTLS at a global level. Uh, however, uh, this setting of global MTLS can be bypassed. Um, in Itstio, a uh, workload level configuration would take precedence over a namespace level configuration and in turn, the namespace uh, would take precedence over a global configuration. So um, if a non-admin, for example, uh, creates a peer authentication with the mode as disable, uh, our permissive um, or, or permissive uh, that targets a particular workload, uh, then this would override our global strict MTLS policy. Uh, the same, by the way, also applies to destination rules. By setting the TLS mode as simple or disable, uh, we can override the uh, global auto MTLS setting. Uh, as I'll talk about in more depth later, uh, the solution to prevent bypassing of the peer authentication and destination rule settings that we want is to leverage policy enforcement. Uh, so now that we've touched on authenticating and encrypting communication, um, we can use the authorization policy resource in its DO to set access controls. So uh, which workloads are authorized to communicate with each other. Um, and we can also be pretty granular about how we set these rules. Uh, for instance, um, authorizing requests based on the originating namespace or uh, service account or also based on specific HTTP methods or request headers. So a recommended best practice is to create a uh, deny by default authorization policy in the root namespace. And then from there, uh, explicitly set your allow permissions. Uh, so now uh, we're implementing the principle of least privileges uh, by explicitly permitting communication on a case by case basis. And also uh, as per the ITSDO documentation, um, some recommended safe patterns for uh, authorization are to use uh, allow with positive and deny with negative matching, and to also use uh, URL normalization uh, to prevent bypassing or policy mismatches. Uh, while Itstio's uh, authorization policy um, on its own is pretty powerful and flexible, um, it's possible that you might need to use a more sophisticated uh, authorization mechanism like uh, Open Policy Agent or uh, OAuth2 Proxy, for instance. Um, if this applies to you, uh, you could configure an uh, external authorization provider through the Itstio mesh config and uh, set a custom action in the authorization policy uh, to delegate the authorization decision uh, to the external service. Uh, we also need to validate that the end user has valid uh, credentials from an identity provider. So you could use the request authentication a resource to verify the end user JWT token uh, based on the URL of the provider's uh, public key set. Uh, and then uh, the request authentication uh, will extract the claims. Um, but if you actually want to uh, deny requests or set access controls uh, based on the claims or deny requests without JOTs, um, then you need an authorization policy on top of the request authentication. Uh, sometimes folks forget about the authorization policy. Um, and in Itstio, this end user authentication and authorization would typically be done at the ingress gateway, um, at least in most cases. 
Uh, it is worth pointing out, though, that uh, while you could use JOTS at a, a workload level uh, for communication inside your mesh, uh, this is typically considered a less secure compared to MTLS. Um, but if you want to use JOTS or uh, end user verification for intramesh traffic, uh, I would advise to use some kind of token exchange mechanism um, and use uh, JOT authentication on top of MTLS uh, inside the mesh, not as a replacement for it. Um, also, because HDO can't get access to all the JOT fields uh, besides the issuer, and uh, different providers might put uh, more information in other fields, uh, you likely need to integrate with an external authorizer uh, to write more granular policies. Uh, the next crucial consideration for uh, improving HDO security posture is how we manage traffic at the edge. So a good rule of thumb is to have the uh, ingress and egress gateways uh, in their own separate namespaces, uh, and then we can restrict access and configuration of the gateways uh, to administrators or whichever team in your organization is managing traffic at the network boundaries. And when we expose our services uh, externally uh, in the gateway custom resource, uh, we want to define them individually and explicitly, like the configuration uh, on the right, um, instead of using uh, wildcard hosts, uh, as is the case uh, with the example here on the left. Uh, to secure traffic through the ingress gateways, uh, we want to ensure that the incoming traffic is encrypted. Uh, we could either use, uh, do that by using uh, SNI pass-through or TLS termination, uh, depending on whether the backend application uh, is serving HTTP or HTTPS. And um, as touched on earlier, uh, we could also have the request authentications and authorization policies um, that target our ingress gateways. It's also not uncommon for users to integrate their ingress gateway with uh, some web application firewall. Uh, to help prevent against uh, various type of web exploits uh, like SQL injection, uh, cross-site scripting, or DDoS attacks. Uh, you could either do this by integrating with an open source tool uh, like OWASP uh, Coraza um, into your Ingress Gateway with a WASM plugin, or um, you could also have a cloud-based WAF um, in front of your gateway. Uh, another option is if you're looking uh, specifically for rate limiting, uh, you can configure this through an Envoy filter. Uh, I would add, though, that uh, we're, though we're talking specifically about Ingress uh, right now, um, you can use web application firewalls uh, or uh, global or local rate limiting for uh, intramesh traffic as well. Um, there was a great lightning talk from earlier today that unpacked this more. Now, for managing egress traffic, uh, the first thing we need to do is set the outbound traffic policy mode uh, to registry only from the default value of allow any. Uh, and then the mesh administrators can create uh, service entries to selectively add external hosts uh, to its DO service registry uh, to make them accessible from inside the mesh. Then uh, once we route traffic uh, through the egress gateway, um, there are two layers of controls we could use to ensure that the egress gateway isn't bypassed. Uh, one, we could use the sidecar custom resource in, in its DO um, to limit the scope of the outbound listeners in the proxies themselves. And on top of that, uh, we can use Kubernetes network policies uh, to block any traffic from pods that aren't destined uh, for the egress namespace. Uh, another piece of advice is to perform TLS origination uh, at the egress gateway and have MTLS set between your sidecars and gateways uh, in your destination rules as opposed to uh, originating HTTPS traffic from the applications directly. So the advantage here is that you can then uh, target the egress gateway with authorization policies and have even more fine green control of your outbound traffic. Um, it's also best practice to have the egress gateway deployed onto its uh, own dedicated node pool. And then you have cloud firewall rules to block any requests uh, that aren't routed through the egress gateway nodes. Um, if you're interested in diving deeper into egress traffic management with Itstio, uh, I cover this more in greater detail in a previous lightning talk for 
last year's It's the Ocon. Uh, next, uh, let's talk about some additional steps for certificate management with Itstio. Uh, so by default, uh, Itstio D will act as both the certificate authority and the registration authority, uh, meaning that it both verifies the certificate signing requests uh, and uh, issues and signs workload certificates. And to do that, it uses a self-signed root certificate, meaning that your root of trust is generated by Itstio itself and uh, that signing key is just living as a secret directly in your cluster. So um, that typically isn't really safe for production. So one alternative framework um, is to use a plug insert model. So here, uh, Itstio D would have an intermediate certificate uh, issued by a root CA that lives offline. And uh, the root cert uh, can be secured, for instance, in um, some cloud key vault or key management service. And then uh, Itstio would use that intermediate cert to issue and sign the workload certificates. The other approach would be to use an external CA. Um, so here uh, we'd be delegating the responsibility of issuing and signing certificates to an external service altogether. Um, there are multiple options here. Uh, you could use a cert manager, a Spire, Kubernetes CSR, or um, even different combinations of all of these. So uh, in the example up here, for instance, uh, you have Cert Manager uh, acting as the root CA to uh, issue certificates to its DOD and the Spire server. And uh, you have Spire receiving the CSRs and issuing the workload certificates. As for which one of these PKI models is better, um, it really depends. Uh, each one has its own respective advantages and disadvantages, um, and organizations are also using different deployment models, and uh, they have varying requirements uh, in terms of their uh, PKI infrastructure. Uh, if you want a more detailed overview of the pros and cons of each of these approaches, uh, but I would highly suggest checking out some additional resources online. And uh, these two talks uh, right here from last year's KubeCon and and it's DO day uh, would be really good places to start. Uh, another important mechanism for enhancing our security framework uh, is to use policy enforcement. So uh, as I was mentioning earlier, uh, we could use solutions like Gatekeeper or Caverno uh, to block peer authentications and destination rules that could override our desired global uh, MTLS setting. Um, an administrator might also want to enforce that all workloads are injected with a sidecar. Say, for instance, if a malicious user uh, was trying to uh, bypass Envoy, and uh, they could do that by rejecting pods uh, that try to disable sidecar injection through a resource level annotation. Additionally, uh, given that uh, misconfiguration can easily undermine our overall system security, uh, it would be prudent to block or set limits uh, around some of the higher risk and error prone features, uh, like for example, Envoy filters, uh, allowing them in more limited capacities. And also, um, it's a good idea to uh, disallow custom resources that are experimental or alpha, and uh, you can get more details on that in the Itstio uh, feature status doc. Um, we also might want to set some fine grained validations uh, around, um, say, authorization policies and gateways. Uh, to enforce that some of these safe patterns I was alluding to earlier, like broad hosts, um, are actually being adhered to. Uh, to secure our environment, uh, we also need adequate visibility to determine uh, who did what and when. Um, so either through the mesh config or the telemetry API, uh, we can enable Envoy access logging. Uh, and then from there, you could forward these access logging to some uh, analytics workspace for your specific cloud provider. And uh, from there, you could leverage some rich alerting and visualization tools. At the same time, however, um, it's important to verify that our telemetry isn't leaking any sensitive information. Uh, for instance, if some of your logging data has personally identifiable information, uh, you want to redact or encode that information accordingly. Um, 
There's also some request and response headers that Istio injects uh, that users often want to remove. Um, the X Envoy peer metadata is a particularly notorious one. Um, though it's possible to remove or uh, reformat some of these headers with uh, Envoy filters and uh, Lua scripts and uh, virtual services, uh, there is some ongoing work by the community and the project maintainers uh, to help simplify this process further. Uh, finally, I wanted to quickly touch on some other honorable mentions. Uh, to harden our environment even further, uh, we want to be mindful of workload and image security. So uh, a very useful tip here is to use the Istio chained CNI plugin uh, instead of the Istio init container, uh, because the init container requires root capabilities uh, to write IP tables rules. Um, and you should also be prioritizing upgrades and staying on an Istio minor version uh, that's still receiving security patches. Uh, one helpful way to avoid remaining on outdated uh, or older versions of Istio or Envoy uh, that still have CVEs is to uh, deploy and upgrade Istio through a GitOps workflow like Argo CD. And uh, this way, uh, you also get the added benefit of uh, minimizing configuration drift. And lastly, uh, to, re to reiterate the importance of defense in depth, uh, You'd want to use Kubernetes network policies to address uh, ports and protocols that aren't captured um, by Istio. Uh, so to conclude, um, I wanted to offer s uh, some suggestions uh, regarding um, just uh, how many of these security controls and mechanisms uh, you need to incorporate. Uh, one caveat is that the way that uh, I went about describing these layers um, is just one conceptual framework. Uh, other users and Istio community members uh, might define these uh, layers differently. Um, for instance, uh, some other guidelines and talks on the subject have used the OSI model to describe uh, the various threats and mitigation strategies, and that's also a perfectly valid way of considering it. But uh, regardless of how you define these layers, uh, what's more important um, is that you have a comprehensive and um, holistic coverage over all of them. So uh, as an analogy, um, if you are preparing to dress up for a snowstorm or a very cold weather, um, it wouldn't make much sense to have a thick jacket uh, on top of a sweater, on top of thermals, uh, but to go out walking barefoot with shorts, um, right? So uh, likewise, if you have a setup that incorporates all the Istio security uh, tools, uh, but doesn't take advantage of the controls offered by uh, Kubernetes or your cloud provider or other extensions, uh, then you're going to be uh, vulnerable to various threat types and malicious actors. So uh, as one example of what a more hardened setup could look like in production, um, in this demo, I've used various Istio security features and configuration options like the uh, chain CNI plugin, uh, outbound traffic policy, and strict peer authentication. Um, and I'm also using Gatekeeper uh, to prevent bypassing of a lot of these settings. Uh, at the Ingress Gateway, uh, I'm authorizing requests based on uh, the JOT token, and I also have a web application firewall installed as a WASM plugin uh, to protect against other types of web-based attacks. Um, I also explicitly needed to create a NAT rule um, to make the Ingress Gateway accessible through the firewall. Uh, so another layer of security right there. And um, I'm also controlling outbound traffic policy uh, through the egress gateway and network policies. Um, and then I have the firewall as another line of defense um, that only allows traffic to leave the nodes uh, if it's routed through the egress gateway nodes. Um, and on top of that, I have a cloud-based key vault to secure uh, the root certificate. And I'm also forwarding the access logs that I've enabled to an analytics workspace. Uh, so now just for a quick run through to take a closer look at the security architecture. Um, yeah, so as you can see here, leveraging GitOps as a handy tool to facilitate installations and upgrades through Argo CD and also monitor configuration drift. Um, 
for my peak AI model, um, I'm using a plug insert uh, with Azure Key Vault uh, to store the certificate in keys. Um, so you could see the uh, CA certs uh, secret here in the Itstio system namespace. Um, and then you could see the secret provider class that maps the secret to the key vault. Um, now let's see what happens to incoming traffic entering the mesh. Uh, we see that a request without a JWT token uh, gets rejected by the authorization policy with the 403. A request with an invalid token gets denied by the request authentication. Um, now, request with a valid bearer token succeeds as expected. Uh, but what happens if I tried, say, a cross scripting attack? Um, because I have the Caraza web application firewall uh, running in the Ingress gateway to detect these kinds of exploits, uh, we could see that that malicious attempt also gets blocked. And if you see the Ingress gateway logs, uh, we could see a uh, Caraza doing its work and reporting the anomaly. So now let's take a look at communication uh, inside the mesh. Um, I have a strict peer authentication in the Itstio system namespace. Um, and if I try creating a permissive policy that overrides that, we see that it will get blocked by gatekeeper. Right? Um, I also have a deny by default authorization policy. Uh, so, um, if I have my sleep application trying to communicate with HTTP bin, um, it'll return a 403 because that communication is not authorized. Okay, cool. Um, now let's take a look at egress traffic. So here I needed to explicitly add a service entry for CNN.com. Uh, to make it accessible from inside the mesh. And um, that's because I have the uh, outbound traffic policy in the mesh config set to registry only. Yeah. Great. But if. Uh, sure, sure. Sorry. Uh, for the interest in time, I'm just going to uh, wrap that up. Um, but yeah, the main thing there is just multiple lines of defense. And um, basically, even if the traffic is bypassed through the egress gateway, then the request would end up getting denied. And uh, if you wanted to try any of this on your own um, on a different cloud provider, uh, here are the equivalents for GKE and, AKS, or, and EKS. Um, also, the slides will be available uh, online, so feel free to download and take a closer look later. Uh, yeah, a few other additional resources if you want to download the slides and check these out later. Um, also, Zach has done a lot of work with Istio and Zero Trust, so um, he is the go-to person for that. So yeah, that's it for my talk today. Uh, I hope you found it helpful, and uh, thanks so much for attending. Uh, please feel free to reach out on LinkedIn. Uh, Please scan the QR code and leave feedback if you enjoy the session. And um, yeah, um, that's pretty much it for me today. And please enjoy the rest of its DO day. Thank you so much, Niraja. I don't think we will have much time. Uh, actually, we might be able to take one question as John, you come up and uh, set up the laptop. If there's uh, any question uh, to Nirajan, um, can you pass the mic? Yeah, thank you. Um, so she was trying to tell you like five minutes before. Yeah, I forgot to tell. I have a question. Yes. Um, oh, do you want to answer the question? Sure, sure. What is your opinion uh, on using security frameworks like? SE Linux or App Arbor to together with Kubernetes and Istio. Sorry, uh, could you repeat the question? I, di I didn't hear. About the use of uh, SE Linux or App Armor within Linux uh, to, to harden uh, the, the containers. This is a question. What is your opinion about this? Uh, 
I'm not uh, as familiar with uh, the specific uh, container uh, security tools, but I think, um, yeah, there, there are various uh, ways you could go about like uh, hardening your container images, and you do want to have that in your uh, environment um, along with the other, uh, uh, like Itzio and Kubernetes security controls. Um, I did have something briefly there about workload security, but um, but yeah, hardening your container images using uh, distroless is always good practice. Okay, thank you.